The Witches by Roald Dahl, dramatized by Lucy Catherine. Part one. In fairy tales, witches always wear silly black hats and black cloaks, and they ride on broomsticks. Grandmama, I can't sleep. Come and sit by the fire, my darling. I've something important to tell you. But this story is not a fairy tale. This story is real. It's time you knew something about witches. Witches aren't real. They, they most certainly are, but they dress in ordinary clothes, and they live in ordinary houses. There could be one living next door, right now. My grandmother was Norwegian. She lived in an old house deep in the countryside. The Norwegians have always known about witches, for Norway, with its black forests and icy mountains, is where the first witches came from. Are you being truthful, Grandmama? This is the gospel truth, my boy, and I'm telling you for your own good. You won't last long in this world if you can't spot a real witch. Now, pass me a cigar. She was the only grandmother I ever met who smoked cigars. Ah, that's better. <clears throat> Where was I? Real witches. Ah, yes. Real witches hate children. Their only passion is to do away with them one by one. The real witch will carefully choose a child, then stalk it like a hunter. She moves quietly. She gets closer. Then, she swoops. Sparks fly, skin shrivels, and the child disappears. But this story does not begin with my wonderful grandmother in Norway. It begins with my mother and father. It begins with something terrible. Mum, Dad, look outside. What's the matter? It's snowing. Of course, it's snowing. It wouldn't be Norway if it didn't snow. I am seven years old, and we are in Norway for Christmas. You see, although both my parents are Norwegian, I was born in England, and I go to school there. But we come back twice a year to see Grandmother. Mum and Dad are so happy to be home. We're Christmas shopping in Oslo, and the snow is falling. There are crystals of ice on the windows. Outside, everything is huge and white. It feels like there is magic in the air. But not all magic is good magic. Did we get everything? There's no more room in the car, and we spent every last kroner we have. Is there anything for me? You'll have to wait and see what Santa brings you. No.、Oh. Remember, only good boys get lots of presents. Have you been a good boy? Stop teasing、all、him. All right. <laughs> and can we get going, please? I'm frozen. Yes, Your Majesty. Blankets round you, darling. That's better. You'll be as snug as a bug in no time. Driving back to grandmother's house, the headlamps light up a million snowflakes dancing their way to the ground. Can you see anything? I can see snow. Lots of snow. Maybe you should slow down a bit. If I go any slower, I might as well stop. I'm hungry. We don't want to be late for supper. Are we nearly there, Dad? Oh, not far now. Oh, damned weather! I like it. So do I. This is proper snow, Norwegian snow, not like the pathetic little flurries you get in England. Look out! Hold on! Oh my God! Darling! I undo my seatbelt and climb into the front. I can see straight away that my mother and father are both dead. Grandmother is sitting in her armchair in front of the fire. I am sitting on her knee. We both cry for a long time with our arms wrapped tightly around each other. 
What are we going to do, Grandmama? You will stay here with me and I will look after you. And then she begins telling me a story. There's nothing better than a story in times of trouble. A story will help us both to forget our sadness. And the best stories are about witches. A real witch has magic in her fingers and devilry dancing in her blood. Real witches. Her mind is always churning and burning and whizzing and fizzing with murderous bloodthirsty thoughts. Which child, exactly which child shall I choose for my next squelching? Y you said her, Grandmama. There is no such thing as a male witch. A ghoul is always male. So is a barkest, but a witch is always a woman. Not everyone knows how to spot a real witch. But they're not real, are they? Yes, they are. Maybe a long time ago, but not anymore. Quite the opposite. They are all around us. Now listen to me, remember everything I tell you, then cross your heart and hope for the best. And put another log on the fire, will you? There's a chill in the air. My grandmother is tremendously old and wrinkled, with a massive, wide body, smothered in grey lace. She sits majestic in her armchair, holding a fresh cigar in her right hand, a hand which has only fingers. The thumb is missing. I have known no less than five children who have simply vanished off the face of this earth, never to be seen again. What happened to them? The witches took them. Five children. Gone. Tell me what happened. Light me a match. It's time for my cigar. <sighs> now, come closer. Yes, Grandmama. The first child I knew who disappeared was called Ronkil Hansen. She was the same age as you. She was playing with her little sister on the lawn. Their mother, who was baking bread in the kitchen, came outside for a breath of fresh air. Where's Rangil? She's gone. Where is she? She went with a tall lady. What lady? The tall lady in the white gloves. She took Rangil by the hand and led her away. <sighs> no one ever saw Rangil again. They searched for miles around. Everyone in the town helped, but they never found her. What happened to the other four children? Vanished, just like Runghill. In every case, a strange lady was seen in the area, just before it happened. But how did they vanish? The second one was very peculiar. Tell me. Huh. There was a family called Christiansen. And they had an old oil painting in the living room, which they were very proud of. The painting showed some ducks in the yard outside a farmhouse. Well, one day their daughter Sulve came home from school, eating an apple. Where did you get that from, Sulve? A nice lady gave it to me in the street. Next morning, little Sulve was not in her bed. She was vanished. Not long after the disappearance, her father was passing the picture, and what do you think he saw? Solve. She was inside the painting. Standing in the farmyard, throwing bread to the ducks. She had been turned into a picture, painted on the canvas. Did you ever see it? Many times. And you know, the really peculiar thing was that little Solve kept changing her position in the picture. One day she would be inside the farmhouse. You could see her face looking out of the window. The next she had moved out into the yard and she had a duck in her arms. Poor Sylvie. Oh. As the years went by, she grew older. She grew up inside the picture. In ten years she was a young woman. In thirty years she was middle-aged. Then all at once, fifty-four years after it happened, she disappeared from the picture forever. She died. Who knows? Some very mysterious things go on in the world of witches. <laughs> Take Birgit Svensson, for example. Who's Birgit Svensson? The third girl who vanished. She used to live across the road from here. One day, she started growing feathers all over her body. Within a month, 
she had turned into a large white chicken. You're joking. I most certainly am not. Her mother kept her in a pen in the garden. She even laid eggs. Here, Birgit. There's a good girl. What colour eggs? Brown ones. Darling, you lay the biggest eggs I've seen in my life. I'm going to make a delicious omelette. She turned into a chicken, but she didn't disappear. She lived on for many years, and she laid many eggs. You said they all vanished. I made a mistake. I'm getting old. I can't remember everything. Can you remember the fourth child? Oh yes, Harar. I remember Harar. One morning, his skin went all greyish yellow. What's happening to me? Then it became hard and crackly, <coughs> like the shell of a nut. <coughs> Mother, help me! By the evening, he had turned completely to stone. Stone? Granite. Are you sure? I'll take you to see him. If you don't believe me, they still keep him in the house. It's not that I don't believe you. What is it then? He really turned into stone. He stands in the hall, a little stone statue. Visitors lean their umbrellas up against him. For real? Look into my eyes. Do you think I'm making this up? No. No. I'm telling you all this because it's important. Now, would you like a puff of my cigar? I'm only eight. I don't care what age you are. You'll never catch a cold if you smoke a cigar. Go on. Tell me what happened to the last one. Number five was a very interesting case. A nine-year-old boy called Leif was summer holidaying with his family on the fjord. He decided to go swimming off some rocks on one of those little islands. Dad, watch me! I'm going to dive in. Be careful, Leif. His father waited for him to come up. He waited, and he waited. Leif. He was just about to dive in and look for Leif when suddenly he surfaced. But Leif wasn't Leif anymore. Who was he? Not who was he. What was he? What was he? He was a porpoise. A porpoise. A lovely young porpoise. I knew his mother well. She told me all about it. How did they know it was Leif? He talked to them. By the end of the day, he was giving them rides. Then he waved a flipper and swam away, never to be seen again. Weird. Not really. You must remember that here in Norway we are used to such things. There are witches everywhere. Ah, huh? now it's time for bed. Good night, Grandma. Yeah, but wait. What is the date? The first. The first. We almost forgot. Bath night. I hate baths. Luckily, Grandmother hates them almost as much as I do. Once a month is quite enough for a sensible child to have a bath. Come on, get those dirty clothes off. I used to be made to have a bath every other night. Now I only have one on the first of the month. Can you always be sure who is a witch? No, you can't. But you can make a pretty good guess. How? In the first place. A real witch is certain to be wearing gloves when you meet her. Not in the summer; it would be too hot. Even in summer, she has to. Why? She doesn't have fingernails. Instead, she has thin, curvy claws like a cat, and she wears the gloves to hide them. Mum used to wear gloves. Not in the house. Witches wear gloves even in the house. They only take them off when they go to bed. How do you actually know all this, Grandma? Now, don't interrupt. Concentrate. The second thing to remember is that a real witch is always bald. <laughs> bald? Bald as a boiled egg. Take it from me. Not a single hair grows on a witch's head. Oh, that's horrible. Disgusting. Still, <laughs> it must make them easy to spot. Oh, not at all. She wears a first-class wig, and it's almost impossible to tell a really first-class wig from ordinary hair. So that doesn't help much either. Not really. Now, mind you, these wigs do cause serious problems for witches. 
What's that? The underneath of a wig is always very rough and scratchy. It sets up a frightful itch on the bald skin. Wig rash, they call it. Is there anything else to look out for? Nose holes. Nose holes? Witches have larger nose holes than ordinary people. Why? To smell you with. A real witch has the most amazing scent or smell. She can actually sniff out a child who is standing on the other side of the street on a pitch black night. Now, out you get. I'll hold out the towel for you. A witch couldn't smell me. I've just had a bath. <laughs> oh, yes, you could. The cleaner you happen to be, the more smelly you are to a witch. What? You see, it isn't the dirt the witch is smelling. It's you oozing out of your skin in waves. And these waves, stink waves, the witches call them, go floating through the air and hit the witch right smack in her larger-than-average nostrils. They send her reeling. Ah. Now, get your pyjamas on and come and sit by the fire. What was that noise? Just an owl. Nothing to be frightened of. Sit on my lap. Ah, you smell nice and clean. Are there any witches around? Who can say? Am I giving out stink waves? Not to me, you aren't. To me, you are smelling like raspberries and cream. But to a witch, you would be smelling absolutely disgusting. What would I be smelling of? Dog's droppings. Dog's droppings? Fresh dog's droppings. I never want to have a bath again. Just don't have one too often. I love you, Grandmama. And I love you. Grandmama? Yes, my darling? Can a witch smell the difference between a child and a grown-up? Grown-ups don't give out stink waves. It, it's getting late. I'm not tired. It's past your bedtime. Tell me how else to recognise a witch. The eyes. The eyes? Look in the middle of each eye, where there is normally a little black dot. If she is a witch, the black dot will keep changing colour, and you will see the fire and ice dancing right in the centre. It will send shivers running all over your skin. Are there other things? The feet. Witches never have toes. They have feet with square ends. It must be difficult for them to walk. Just as a witch hides her baldness with a wig, she must also hide her ugly witch's feet by squeezing them into small pointed shoes. That must hurt. She has to put up with it. If she's wearing ordinary shoes, how can I recognise her? You might possibly see her limping very slightly if you are watching closely. There is one more difference. What is it? Their spit is blue. Blue? Blue as a bilberry. Like ink? Exactly. They even use it to write with. They use those old-fashioned pens that have nibs, and they simply lick the nib. If a witch was talking to me, would I be able to notice the spit? Oh, you might see a slight bluish tinge on her teeth, but it doesn't show much. It would if she spat. Oh, witches never spit. They don't. I am watching my grandmother's face carefully. There is no hint of a smile, no twinkle in the eye. She is deadly serious. When you were a little girl, did you ever meet a witch? Once. Only once. What happened? I'm not going to tell you. It would frighten you out of your skin and give you bad dreams. Does it have something to do with your missing thumb? Grandmama? Time for bed. Hello? Anyone at home? Who is it, Grandmama? A man dressed in black and carrying a briefcase walks into the room. This is Mr. Olufsen. He's a solicitor. He opens his briefcase on the kitchen table. I have brought your father's will. What is a will? It is something you write before you die, to say who is going to have your money and property. And who is going to look after your children? It is you, isn't it, Grandma? 
Your father asked me to take care of you for as long as I live. The will does, however, stipulate that your father wishes you to be taken back to England to finish your schooling there. No. He was very specific. But, Grandmama, you would hate to leave Norway. You always say, heaven may take my soul, but... Norway shall keep my bones. I know. But it is very important to respect the wishes of the dead. The new term begins in England in a few days' time. You're expected back at your old school. Come on, cheer up. We've got packing to do. We have to look on the bright side. There are not as many witches in England as there are in Norway. There are probably no more than 200. This is the first time Grandmother has mentioned the witches since I asked about her thumb. I'm sure I won't meet one. I sincerely hope not. Those English witches are the most vicious in the world. Their favourite ruse is to mix up a powder that turns the child into a creature that all grown-ups hate. I'm only half listening. I keep looking at the hand with the missing thumb, wondering what awful thing happened to her when she met a witch. Orphan? It's a slug. That's one of their favourites. They love to see someone step on the slug and squish it without realising it's a child. Had the thumb been twisted off? Or forced down the spout of a boiling kettle till it steamed away? And I've known English witches who have turned children into pheasants and then sneaked the pheasants up into the woods the very day before the pheasant shooting season opened. Or did someone pull it out of her hand like a tooth? Then they were shot. Those poor children were shot, plucked, roasted and eaten for dinner. I can't help trying to guess. I don't want to go back to England. I'm afraid we've got to go. I don't want to go back to school. Why ever not? I don't learn anything useful. Such as? Um, how to spot a witch. Now, fold your clothes properly. This suitcase is full now. Now, start filling up the next one. We won't be back for a long time. You, you see... Once a year, the witches of each separate country get together to receive a lecture from the Grand High Witch of all the world. Who? She is the most powerful ruler. Every other witch is petrified of her. Where does the Grand High Witch live? Oh, nobody knows. Witcherfiles all over the world have spent their lives trying to discover the secret headquarters of the Grand High Witch. What is a witcherfile? A person who studies witches and knows a lot about them. Are you a witcherfile? I'm a retired witcherfile. I am too old to be active any longer, but when I was younger I travelled all over the world trying to track down the Grand High Witch. I never found her. If nobody has ever seen the Grand High Witch, how can you be sure she exists? Nobody has ever seen the devil. Have they? But we know... He is real. Come on. We have a boat to catch. We are in England, living in Kent, in the old family house. I'm back at school every weekday. Everything seems normal again. In the enormous conquer tree at the end of the lawn, I'm starting to build a magnificent treehouse. Be careful up there, won't you? Of course. If you fall, you break a leg. <laughs> I love it, high up here in the tree. It's like being in a big green cave. Every time I look down, I get a tingle in my spine. Little boy! Who is it? Little boy! I have a present for you. Standing at the bottom of the tree, a woman I've never seen before. It's probably the most exciting present you have ever had. She's smiling up at me. I can see her gums. They look like raw meat. Come down and I shall give it to you. She's wearing gloves. Go away! Look! She takes a small green snake out of her purse. It's tame. Would you like it? The snake coils itself around her arm. Grandmama! She can't hear you! Leave me alone! I panic. 
I climb the tree as high as I can go. I have been here, clinging to a branch for hours. It's starting to get dark. Oh, sugar. Thank you. That's the thing for shock. I've seen a witch, haven't I, Grandmama? I'm afraid so. She glances down at that hand of hers that doesn't have a thumb. You know what this means? What? It means that there is one of them in our district. From now on, I'm not letting you walk to school alone. The Easter holidays have come and gone. My grandmother and I are planning to take our summer holiday in Norway. We talk about almost nothing else every evening. I booked a cabin for us on the boat from Newcastle. Yes! I'm going to take you to Arndal. Where's that? On the coast. I used to go there every summer when I was your age. We can spend all day diving off the smooth granite rocks into the sea. I can't wait. I really can't wait. <coughs> Of course I am. But I'll be much better when I'm breathing the Norwegian air. <coughs> Breathe in and out. How is she, Doctor? I'm afraid your grandmother has pneumonia. What's pneumonia? It's a very dangerous illness for someone of her age. She's becoming very weak. She must have complete rest. She must be left alone in peace. <gasps> Grandmother is very ill. I'm terrified she will die. I'm not allowed to see her for ten days. Grandmother? We have someone here to see you. Come in, my darling. Oh, I've missed you. Oh, give me a big hug. Will you be all right now? Oh, I'll soon be up again. Will she, Doctor? Oh, yes. He won't let me have a cigar, but you wait till he's gone. You don't need a cigar. You need some Norwegian air. Norwegian air? We're going home for the summer. I'm afraid not. Rubbish. I promised the boy we'll go. You're too weak to travel such a distance. He's been so looking forward to it. So is she. You can take your grandson to a nice hotel on the south coast of England instead. The sea air is just what you need. Oh, no. Do you want your grandmother to die? Never! Then don't let her go on a long journey this summer. And stop her smoking those vile black cigars. I will buy you a present to make up for it. You tell me what you would like. Can you manage the suitcases, dear? Yes. And the cage? Yeah. Have you given the mice names yet? I've called them William and Mary. Oh, very good. They're the best present I ever had. Oh, I'm so sorry about our holiday. It's okay. It's not much like Norway here. Bournemouth seems to be full of old people. Yeah, they come because they think the bracing sea air will keep them alive a few extra years. Does it? Of course not. Where will we be staying? The Hotel Magnificent. That sounds posh. Well, let's get in a taxi and find out. Wow! This place is amazing. Look, open this door and you have your own separate bedroom that connects to mine. I'm going to sit on my bed and start teaching William and Mary some tricks. Good luck! Right, you two. Out you come. It's time to start work. Two little white mice are sitting expectantly on the palm of my hand. First of all, I want you to crawl inside my sleeve 
climb up my arm and come out at my neck. If you make it, you'll find there's a little treat on top of my head. I'll sprinkle cake crumbs in my hair. Ready? Up you go. That's right. Up. Up. Go on. Up. Well done, William. Go on, Mary. Oh, Mary, that's brilliant. They're fast learners, Grandmama. Don't let them run away, will you? They won't run away. They love their training too much. Oh, <laughs> come on, Mary. <laughs> the next morning, the chambermaid is making my bed when, all of a sudden, William decides to poke his head out from under the sheets. I cannot permit mice in my hotel. Mr. Stringer is the manager. He is wearing a black tailcoat. There are health and hygiene considerations. Health and hygiene? Don't make me laugh. Madam, this is a high-quality establishment. How dare you lecture me about hygiene when your rotten hotel is full of rats anyway? Rats? There are no rats in this hotel. I saw one this morning. It was running down the corridor into the kitchen. That is not true. You had better get a rat catcher in at once before I report you to the public health authorities. <sighs> I expect they're scuttling all over the kitchen floor, stealing the food off the shelves and jumping in and out of the soup. Never. If the health people get wind of this, the entire hotel will be closed before everyone gets typhoid fever. You are not being serious, madam. I was never more serious in my life. So, Mr. Stringer, are you or are you not going to allow my grandson to keep his white mice in his room? May I suggest a compromise, madam? I will permit him to keep them in his room as long as they are never allowed out of their cage. How does that suit? Hmm? That will suit us very well. Come along, darling. Let's go. Grandma, I can't train William and Mary if they're stuck in a cage. You will just have to, my dear. If that awful chambermaid catches them again, she'll have them drowned in a bucket of water. Stay in there, you two. There must be somewhere out of the way where we can carry on with the training. I'm wandering through the hotel with one mouse in each pocket, searching for an empty room or a quiet spot of some kind. Let's see. Lounge? Smoking room? Card room? They've all got people in. Ah, the ballroom. This looks good. There is a large notice board on a stand by the entrance. RSPCC meeting. Strictly private. This room is reserved for the annual meeting of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Hmm. Empty. The room is empty, apart from rows and rows of chairs all facing a platform. At the back of the room is a large folding screen with Chinese dragons painted on it. Mr. Stringer will never find us behind here. This is the perfect place for mouse training. Out you come, you two. William and Mary crawl out of my trouser pockets and sit beside me on the carpet. Very quiet and very well behaved. Now. The trick I'm going to teach you today is tightrope walking. I have it all planned. I Come take out my string and the current cake that I know Mary and William love, and I start the lesson. I imagine that one day I will become the owner of a world-famous white mouse circus, performing before all the crowned heads of Europe. I'm just getting carried away with this thought when... This way, ladies, please. A great flock of ladies is following Mr. Stringer into the room. I am sure you will be quite comfortable in here. If there is anything we can do for you, then please let us know. Thank you. Tea will be served for you all on the Sunshine Terrace after you have concluded your meeting. Thank you. I'm watching them through the crack in the screen, waiting for them to settle down. There must be about 200 of them. next to me, Millie, dear. I notice a lady in the middle of the back row. She 
She keeps scratching at the nape of her neck. Maybe she has nits. Hang on. They're all doing it. All of the ladies are scratching away like mad at the back of their heads. They've all got nits. Then something astonishing happens. What's that lady doing? She's pushing her fingers right up underneath her hair. It's lifting up. She's wearing a wig. And she's wearing gloves. They're all wearing gloves. There is no way out of the room. Stay calm. Keep very still. I start to shake. My blood turns to ice. I'm trapped in the room with two hundred witches. The doors! Are they chained and bolted? The doors are chained and bolted, Your Grandness. I feel very dizzy. I feel faint. <laughs> Then we shall begin. I come round in a few seconds. No one seems to have noticed me. I sit up shakily and peer once more through the crack in the screen. A tiny woman with long black gloves is standing on the platform at the front of the hall. She's unhooking something behind her ears, pulling at her cheeks. She's peeling her face off. She turns round to the front. I nearly scream out loud. It's a mask. Her real face is crumpled and wizened, and it seems quite literally to be rotting away at the edges. It is the most frightening face I have ever seen, and I know at once she must be the Grand High Witch. You may remove your gloves. Oh, Grandmama, you are right. They've got claws. You may remove your shoes. And square toes. You may remove your wigs. Mm. Remove your wigs and get some air into your sporty scalps. They're all bald. I'm trapped in a room full of child killers. Then I remember something my grandmother told me. The dirtier you are, the harder it is for a witch to smell you out. How long since I had a bath? I glance down at my hands. They're filthy. The stink waves can't possibly get out through that. Witches of England, miserable witches, useless, lazy witches, feeble, fribbling witches, you are a heap of idle, good-for-nothing worms. The Grand High Witch is clearly in an ugly mood. The audience shudders. I am having breakfast this morning. And I am looking out of the window at the beach. And what am I seeing? I am asking you, what am I seeing? I am seeing a revolting sight. I am seeing hundreds. I am seeing thousands of rotten, repulsive little children playing on the sand. Why have you not rubbed them out? I am asking you, why? Children smell. They stink out the world. We do not want these children here. Yes, Your Grandness. Yes, Your Grandness. What is the motto of all witches? One child a week is two here. Squish them and squiggle them and watch them disappear. One child a week is no good to me. Is this the best you can do? Oh, we, we will do better. We'll do much better. Yes. Better is no good either. I demand maximum results. So here are my orders. My orders are that every single child in this country shall be rubbed out. Squashed, squirted, squitted and frittered before I come here again in one year's time. Do I make myself clear? All of them? We, we can't possibly wipe out all of them. Who dares to argue with me? The Grand High Witch points a gloved finger as sharp as a needle at the witch that has spoken. It was you, was it not? I, I didn't mean it, Your Grandness. I, I didn't mean to argue. I, I was just talking to myself. You dared to argue with me. I, I was just talking to myself. I swear it, Your Grandness. <laughs> A stupid witch who answers back must burn until her bones are black. No, no. A foolish witch without a brain must sizzle in the fiery flame. Save me! An idiotic witch like you must most upon the barbecue. Ah! 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 
stream of white-hot sparks come shooting out of the Grand High Witch's eyes. They strike the other witch. A puff of smoke rises up around her. The smell of burning meat fills the room. When the smoke has cleared away, the chair is empty. She's gone. Good. Now we can get down to business. Children are revolting. We will scrub them off the face of the earth. We will flush them down the drain. Yes, 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 Dogs droppings is smelling like violets and primroses compared with children. So now, so now I am having a plan. I am having a gigantocus plan for getting rid of every single child in the whole of England in one stroke. Shut up and listen. Each and every one of you is to go back to your hometowns immediately and resign from your jobs. Resign! Give notice! Retire! And then each and every one of you will be buying... What? Sweet shops. You will be buying the very best and most respectable sweet shops in England. We will! We will. We will. You will be having no trouble in getting what you want because you will be offering four times as much as the shop is worth. No, I have brought with me six trunks stuffed full of English banknotes, all of them new and crisp, and all of them homemade. <laughs> <laughs> and children will come flocking to my shop, and I will feed them poison sweets and poison chocks and wipe them all out like weasels. <laughs> Who spoke? It was you. Sorry, your grandness. You brainless bog bumper. Are you not realizing that if you are going around poisoning little children, you'll be caught in five minutes flat? Don't hurt me, your grandness. Do you not know that we witches are working with magic? Yes, yes we, we know, we know, your grandness. So, yes. you will all be owning sweet shops. Next, you will be having a great gala opening with free sweets and chocks to every child. You will be preparing for the great gala opening by filling every sweet and chock in the shop with my very latest and greatest magic formula. Oh, and that will be a wondrous magic child killer! This is known as Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. How do we make it? Oh, brilliant one! Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker is a green liquid. One droplet in each chalk will be quite enough. So, child comes to great gala opening of sweet shop. Child eats chalk. Child goes home feeling fine. Then goes to bed, still feeling fine. Child wakes up in the morning and goes to school, still okay. Formula, you understand, is delayed action and is not working yet. But when does it start working? It is starting to work at exactly nine o'clock when the child is arriving at school. Child starts to shrink. Child is starting to grow fur. Child is starting to grow tail. All is happening in precisely 26 seconds. 26 seconds later, child is not a child anymore. It is a mouse. A mouse! <laughs> and what is happening next in every school? So pretty one. Mouse traps! <laughs> The Grand High Witch begins dancing on the platform at the front of the room, stamping her feet and clapping her hands. Soon, the whole room is joining in. Down with children, do them in. Boil their bones and fry their skin. Beast them, squish them, bash them, mash them, break them, shake them, slash them, smash them. <laughs> oh, for chocks of magic powder. Say it up, then say it louder. <laughs> A boy who was extremely tall cried out, what's wrong? I'm growing small. For tiny legs begin to sprout from everybody around about. And all at once, all in a Christ, there are no children. <laughs> Only mice. <laughs> Attention. I will now give you the recipe for concord. 
Acting Formula 86, delayed action mouse maker. Get out, pencils and paper. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, my face. My face. She's done it to show us. The brainy one has turned two children into mice. And there they are. William. Mary. Oh, no. On the platform, near the Grand High Witch's skirts, my two white mice scurry. Oh. mice are nothing to do with me. They are obviously belonging to some repellent boy in this hotel. A filthy, smelly little boy. We'll swizzle him. We'll have his tribes for breakfast. Silence. You know perfectly well we must do nothing to draw attention to ourselves. We are all respectable ladies of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. How shall we dispose of him? Leave him to me. I shall smell him out and turn him into mackerel. They're talking about me. William and Mary are still on the platform. Suddenly, the Grand High Witch aims a swift running kick at William and sends him flying. She does the same to Mary. Her aim is extraordinary. The mice crash against a wall. They stun for a moment and then scamper away. Now, the recipe. First... I need something that would cause the child to become small very quickly. For this, we must be looking at him through the wrong end of a telescope. Take one wrong end of telescope and boil it until it gets soft. 21 hours of boiling. And then what next, over anyone? Take exactly 45 brown mice and chop off their tails. Fry the tails in hair oil on a low heat until they are crisp. But what about the mice with no tails? Simmer them in frog juice for one hour. They are delicious. Mm. So far, I have only told you the easy part of the recipe. The real problem is to find an ingredient that will have a delayed action result. Well, tell us the secret. The secret is... An alarm clock. Oh, that's yes. yeah. You set a 24 hour alarm clock today, and exactly 9 o'clock tomorrow it will go off. But we will need 5 million alarm clocks, one for each child. Pretty arts! One clock is enough for a thousand children. You set your alarm clock to go off at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. Are you writing all this down? Yes, we are. We are your grandmother. <sighs> Put everything in a mixer. Add the yolk of a gruntul's egg, the claw of a crab cruncher, the beak of a blabbersnitch, the snout of a grobble squirt, and the tongue of a cat springer. Hmm? I trust you are not having any trouble finding those. Oh, none at all. None at all. I am now going to prove to you that this recipe is working to perfection. Yesterday, I am personally preparing a small quantity of the magic potion in order to give you a public demonstration. Oh, yes. mm? I set the alarm clock to go off at half past three this afternoon. I put droplet of potion into a very squishy chocolate bar, and I am giving this chocolate bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging round the lobby of the hotel. A shiver runs down my spine. Something bad is going to happen. I told the little boy, I will give him six more chocolate bars if he meets me here in the ballroom today at 3.30. In five minutes' time, the nasty little stinker will be turning into a mouse. I look down at my watch. Twenty-five past three. Let me in. There he is. The greedy little swine is early. Quick, everyone. Wigs, gloves, shoes. The Grand High Witch reaches for her mask and puts it on over that revolting face of hers. Unchain the doors and let him come in. Where are those chocolate?
chocolate bars you promised me. Oh. I'm here to collect. Dish them out. Well, hello, little man. How nice to see you. It's Bruno. Oh. Bruno Jenkins. He is staying at the hotel with his parents. He's one of those boys who's always eating something whenever you meet him. Oh, darling boy, I have your chocolate bars ready. Do come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. The witch at the back is quietly putting the chains back on the door handles. The Grand High Witch holds Bruno firmly by the hand. Oh, no. What the heck's going on? Thirty seconds left. What is this? Give me my chocolate. Keep still now. Let's go of me. Twenty seconds. Give me the chocolate and let me out of here. Fifteen seconds. One of you crazy punks kindly tell me what this is all about. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, three, two, two one. one. Zero! We have ignition! Uh, 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 the Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker is beginning to work. Look at him jump! <laughs> this smelly brat, this filthy scum, this horrid little louse will very, very soon become a lovely little mouse. He's getting smaller. I watch in horror. He's growing fur. He's got a tail. He's got whiskers. He's a mouse. And here, I have a mouse trap. I will set it and we can chop his head off. I don't want to see this. Where is he? Where has that mouse got to? Clever Bruno has scampered off into some corner. He is nowhere to be seen. It matters not! Silence! Sit down. It comes to me that you ancient ones will not be able to climb high trees in search of Grontol's eggs or sprint after the speedy cat springer. So, I have prepared personally with my own hands a limited quantity of Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker, which I will distribute to all the ancient ones before I leave the hotel. She holds up a tiny dark blue bottle. This bottle contains 500 doses, enough to turn 500 children into mice. Each of the ancient ones will get two bottles. Oh, thank you, thank you. most generous one. Our meeting is over. Here is the timetable for the remainder of your stay in the hotel. Six o'clock. Those entitled will report to my room to receive two bottles each of Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. My room number is 454. Eight o'clock. All of you will assemble in the dining room for supper. Now, out you go. Oh, it's over at last. Wait! Hold everything! Dog's droppings. I just got away from dog's droppings. Yes. Yes, there it is again. It's not strong. But it's definitely not far away. What's going on down there? Oh, she's right. Dog's droppings. <gasps> There's a child in here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Grandpa, what am I to do? You pull it out and exterminate it immediately. There is no escape. The doors are chained. I look round the screen and see a hideous, painted and powdered face staring at me. It's here. Catch it then, you idiots! I try to run for it, but it's no good. They have me cornered. Help! Get it! Stop it, yelling! They rush Help! at me. About five Help! of them grab me by my arms and legs. One of them claps a gloved hand over my mouth. Bring it here. <laughs> now, for a little medicine. Hold his nose and make him open his mouth. I try to keep my mouth shut, but it's impossible. The Grand High Witch pours the entire bottle of Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker down my throat. I'm burned! Help! Oh, please! 
A searing, <coughs> scorching feeling spreads from my chest to my tummy to my arms and legs. My skin starts tightening and shrinking. Then the squeezing, like I'm inside an iron suit that's getting smaller and smaller. This stinking little carbuncle has had 500 doses, and now we are having instantaneous action. I'm only an inch from the floor. I've got furry front paws. I'm a mouse. Now for the mouse trap. Snappity snap. Snappity snap. No. I'm not waiting for that. I run. I run across the ballroom floor like a streak of lightning over the witch's feet as fast as my four furry legs will carry me. I'm running, running for my life. <laughs> In Part 1 of The Witches by Roald Dahl, dramatised by Lucy Catherine, Boy was played by Ryan Watson, Grandmother by Margaret Tyzak, Boy's Father by Ben and Wukwe, Bruno by Jordan Clark, and the narrator was Toby Jones. The Grand High Witch was Amanda Lawrence, other witches were played by Leanne Rowe and Rachel Atkins, Mr Stringer by Peter Marinka, and the director was Claire Grove. The Witches by Roald Dahl Dramatised by Lucy Catherine Part 2 In fairy tales, witches wear silly black hats and they ride on broomsticks. The squeezing, like I'm in an iron suit getting smaller and smaller. Now prickling, I don't feel myself any longer. But this story is not a fairy tale. This story is real. I'm only an inch from the floor. I've got very front paws. I'm... a mouse! They dress in ordinary clothes and they live in ordinary houses. There could be one right next to you, right now. Now for the mouse trap! Snappity snap! Snappity snap! <laughs> I'm not waiting for that. The Grand High Witch has given me 500 doses of Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker as part of her plan to turn all the children of England into mice so that their school teachers will kill them with mouse traps. And she's about to set one for me. I run, I run across the ballroom floor like a streak of lightning over the witch's feet as fast as my four furry legs will carry me. I'm running, running for my life. Right about witches. They could be anyone. And they do hate children. They hate them enough to turn them into mice. I need a place to hide. Behind this chair leg looks best. The witches search everywhere, but they can't find me. Leave the little stink pot alone. It's not worth bothering about. It is only a mouse now. Yes, your grandness. Somebody else will soon catch it. Let us get out of here. The meeting is over. And with that, the witches all leave. Soon, the ballroom is empty and silent. I begin to move cautiously. Then I remember something. Bruno Jenkins. Another boy transformed into a mouse. He must be around here somewhere. Bruno! I try calling out, and I get the shock of my life. My voice is exactly the same as it was when I was a boy. Hey, Bruno Jenkins, where are you? My perfectly normal, rather loud voice is coming out of my tiny mouth. If you can hear me, give me a shout. I potter about between the chair legs, trying to get used to being so close to the ground. I soon decide I rather like it. This is good fun. I could get used to being a mouse. What's so special about being a boy, anyway? Boys have to go to school. Mice don't. 
They don't have to pass exams. They don't have to worry about money. Mice have only two enemies, cats and humans. My grandmama is a human, and I know for certain that she will always love me, whatever I am. And she would never keep a cat. Mmm, this is tasty. Up ahead, I see another mouse crouching on the floor, nibbling on a piece of bread. Bruno, what have you found? Fish paste sandwich. One of them dropped it. It is pretty good. Listen, Bruno, mm. now that we're both mice, I think we ought to start thinking mm. a bit about the future. What do you mean, we? You being a mouse has got nothing to do with me. But you're a mouse too. I'm not. You are? Leave me alone, will you? Don't you know what's happened? What are you talking about? The witches turned you into a mouse. Then they did it to me too. You're lying. If you hadn't been so busy guzzling that sandwich, you would have noticed your hairy paws. Look at them. What are you talking about? <gasps> I told you. I've got fur. I, I am a mouse. Oh, you wait till my father hears about this. He may think it's an improvement. I, I don't want to be a mouse. I refuse to be a mouse. I'm Bruno Jenkins. Stop jumping up and down. Look at the positives. You can live in a hole. I don't want to live in a hole. And you can creep into the larder at night. Oh. I suppose. Nibbling your way through all the packets in there. Hmm. Cornflakes, uh, raisins, chocolate biscuits. Is that what mice do? You can stay there all night eating yourself silly. Now that's a thought. Oh, but how am I going to open the fridge to get at the cold chicken and all the leftovers? That's what I do every evening at home. Your father might get you a special little mouse fridge. One that you can open yourself with your little mouse hands. He better had to. Hmm. Did you say a witch did this to me? That's right. Which witch? The one who gave you the chocolate bar yesterday. Filthy old cow. I'll get her for this. Where is she? Forget it. You don't have a hope. Your biggest problem at the moment is your parents. How are they going to take it? What do you mean? Well, will they treat you with sympathy and kindness? I think... Yes? My father is going to be a bit put out. And your mother? She's terrified of mice. Then you've got a problem. What about you? My grandmother will understand me perfectly. She knows all about witches. Mm. I suggest we find her and mm. ask her advice. Oh. She'll know what to do. Whatever. Are you listening? Of course. Good. Follow me. When we get out of the corridor, we're going to have to run like mad. Do you understand? I can't run and eat at the same time. Stop eating then. That's my sandwich. Oh, don't throw it away. Stick close to the wall and follow me. Do not talk and do not let anyone see you. Don't forget that just about anyone who catches sight of you will try to kill you. Are you ready? Uh, I suppose. Here he goes. We leave the ballroom and I take off like a flash. I streak down the corridor, through the library and the drawing room and come to the stairs. Are you with me, Bruno? Oh, right here. Grandmother's room is on the fifth floor. It's quite a climb. Oh, great. We make it up five flights of stairs without meeting a single person. On the fifth floor, we race along the corridor and stop outside her room. So, so how do we get in? I don't know. Genius. It's the chambermaid. She'll drown us in a bucket of water if she catches us. What shall we do? Hide. Hide where? Anywhere. I'm no good at hiding. My grandmother's shoes. She's left them outside the door to be cleaned. You get in one, I'll get in the other. What's happening? Shh. Oh, shoes. I'll take them down now. The maid's hand is right inside the shoe. One of her fingers brushes against my whiskers. Help. Without thinking, I bite. <laughs> she drops the shoe. Ow. What on earth is going on out here? Mice! Mice are attacking me! Quick, Bruno, get inside before the door's open. Hurry! What an odd girl! We're in! Yes! Who's talking? It's me. Where are you? 
down here? Grandmother is looking straight at my pointy little face. She knows it is me, and her eyes stretch so wide I can see the whites all around them. She starts to tremble. Oh, my poor sweet darling. What have they done? Don't cry, Grandmama. Things could be a lot worse. I'm still alive. So is Bruno. Oh, come here. She bends down very slowly and picks me up in one hand and Bruno in the other. She puts us both on the table next to the fruit bowl. Lastly, unpack this after all that exhaustion. They've changed you just like poor Harald and little Sulve. I know what I am, Grandmama. But the funny thing is, I don't feel too bad about it. You don't? In fact, I'm feeling good. Oh, my dearest. I know I'm not a boy anymore, but it'll be all right. As long as I've always got you to look after me. Of course I will look after you. Who is the other one? He was a boy called Bruno Jenkins. They got him first. Oh, I need a cigar. Tell me, when did this happen? Where is the witch now? Grandmama, it wasn't just one. It was hundreds. They're right here in the hotel. You don't mean... You mean they're holding the annual meeting right here? They've held it, Grandma. It's finished. I heard it all. And all of them, including the Grand High Witch herself, <gasps> are downstairs now. No! They're pretending they're the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. And they caught you? They smelt me out. Oh, dog's droppings, was it? Yes, but it wasn't strong. Another week's worth of dirt, and they would never have detected the stink waves. Oh, that is unfortunate. Now, mm, I need you to tell me everything that has happened. Don't leave anything out. I take a deep breath, and I begin to talk. I tell her about hiding behind the screen in the ballroom, and the small woman who peeled her own face off. It was a mask, Grandmama, and underneath her real face was horrible, like something that had gone rotten. Go on, don't stop. Then they all took their wigs and their gloves and their shoes off. And they were all bald, with sharp claws and square feet. Just like he said, the Grand High Witch shot fiery white-hot sparks from our eyes and turned one of them into a puff of smoke. I've heard of that, but I have never quite believed it. You are the first non-witch to witness it, ever. Really? It is her favourite punishment. It is known as getting fried. I'm told she makes it a rule to fry at least one witch at each annual meeting. Why, Grandmama? To keep the others on their toes, of course. But they don't have any toes. Please go on. Then I tell her about how they changed me, about Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker and the Grand High Witch's plan to turn all the children of England into mice. She wants them all to be killed. Every last one. I knew it. I knew they were brewing up something tremendous. We've got to stop them. You can't stop witches. Just look at the power the terrible Grand High Witch has in her eyes alone. She could kill any of us at any time with those white hot sparks of hers. You saw it yourself. We have to. Tell me about Bruno. How did they get him? That hug of a witch gave me some chocolate yesterday to post them. It was a very tasty bar, though. Yeah, but does he ever stop eating? Only when the food runs out. Huh. Can you explain something to me, Grandmama? I'll try. Why can Bruno and me still talk and think like we could before? That's quite simple. All they've done is shrink you and give you four little legs and a furry coat. They haven't been able to change you into a 100% mouse. You still have your own mind and your own voice, and thank goodness for that. So I'm not just an ordinary mouse. I'm sort of half person, half mouse. Quite right. You are very special. She lifts me onto her lap and begins to gently stroke the soft fur along my back. Mm. Ooh, that feels nice. Mm. You will always be special to me. Grandma, I think I've got an idea. What is it, darling? The Grand High Witch said her room was number 454. Right. This room is number 554. 554 is on the fifth floor, so 454 will be on the fourth floor. That is correct. That means room 454 could be directly underneath room 554. It is certainly possible. But what if it is? 
Take me out onto the balcony so I can look down. Oh. <sighs> All the rooms in the Hotel Magnificent have their own private balconies. Oh, here we are. What do you see? That one immediately below must be the Grand High Witches. If I could get down there, I could get into my room. And get caught all over again? I won't allow it. At this moment, the witches are down on the Sunshine Terrace having tea. So? The Grand High Witch won't be back until six o'clock. That's when she's going to dish out the Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker to the ancient witches. And if you did manage to get into her room, what then? I could find the place where she keeps it. I could steal a bottle and bring it back here. How would you carry it? It's a very small bottle. And if you did manage to get it? One bottle is enough for 500 people. We could turn each and every witch down there into a mouse. Give them a dose of their own medicine. Oh, what a fantastic idea! You're a genius! My grandmother suddenly jumps about an inch in the air and I nearly bounce out of her hand over the railings of the balcony. Whoa! Be careful with me, Grandmama. We'd get rid of every witch in England in one fell swoop. And the Grand High Witch too. It's got to be worth a try. If we carry this off, then it will be the greatest triumph in the whole history of witchery. There's a lot of work to do. Of course there's a lot of work to do for a start, even if you did manage to get one of those bottles. How would you get it into their food? That's for later. Let's get hold of the stuff first. We shall find out immediately if the room below is really hers. Now, come along. <laughs> Three, four, five. She carries me in one hand six, along the corridor, counting the number of doors we pass until we reach the stairs. Then down one flight to the fourth one, floor. Two, three, four, five, six. There it is, number four five four. The same number of doors. Her room is directly below your room. Let's go. Definitely her balcony down there. It's a long way. If I fall, I'll be a goner. I can see spiked iron railings far below. How are you going to climb down? I'm not sure. I've got it. Grandmother rushes back into her room and begins rummaging in a chest of drawers. Found it. She comes back with a ball of blue wool. One end of it is attached to some knitting needles and a half-finished sock she's been making for me. This is perfect. I shall put you in the sock and lower you down onto the Grand High Witch's balcony. But we must hurry. Any moment now that monster will be returning to her room. In you go. She pops me in the sock. Are you ready? Ready. Good luck, my darling. And lowers me over the balcony. I crouch inside, holding my breath. You're nearly there. The sock is swinging about in the breeze. Hold on. It's a bit windy. Nearly there. There you go. Gently does it. You're down. I wouldn't call that gentle. In you go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Search the room. On my way. The Grand High Witch's bedroom has the same musty smell about the place I had noticed in the ballroom. The smell of witchery. But I don't see anything suspicious. It looks like an ordinary bedroom. <laughs> what? What's that? What is it? A frog hops across the carpet and disappears under the bed. Hurry up. Grab the stuff and get out. If you were the Grand High Witch and you wanted to hide something top secret, where would you put it? I jump onto the bed to get a better view of the room. Under the mattress? Very carefully, I lower myself over the edge of the bed and worm my way underneath the mattress. It's dark under here. I can't see a thing. No! I hit my head on something hard. I reach up and feel it with my paw. 
a little bottle. And another one. Lots of little bottles. Walking backwards and dragging the bottle behind me, I manage to reach the edge of the mattress. I roll the bottle off the bed onto the carpet. It doesn't break. Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. This bottle contains 500 doses. Eureka! I found it, Grandmama! Come on then, darling! I'm about to leave when three frogs hop out from under the bed and crouch on the carpet, staring at me with large black eyes. Hello. They're the saddest things I have ever seen. Did you used to be children too? Who are you? At that moment, the door bursts open. Ugh. Thank goodness that is over. The Grand Eye Witch. The frogs hop under the bed. I dart after them, still clutching the bottle, and squeeze in behind one of the bedposts. Where are you? Her face comes into view, peering under the bed. So there you are, my little froggies. You can stay where you are until I go to bed tonight. Then I shall throw you out of the window and the seagulls can have you for supper. Hurry up, my darling. You better come out quickly. Who's calling? Oh, no. The Grand High Witch strides across the carpet. Who is making such a noise? Who is it? Who dares to trespass on my balcony? She goes out onto the balcony itself. What is this knitting wool hanging down here? Oh, hello. Who are you? Oh, I just dropped my knitting over the balcony by mistake. But it's okay. I've got hold of one end of it. I can pull it up by myself. Thank you all the same. And who were you talking to? Oh, I was just talking to my little grandson. He's been in the bathroom and it's time he came out. He sits in there reading books and forgets completely where he is. <laughs> do you have children, my dear? I do not! <sighs> she comes back into the bedroom, slamming the balcony door behind her. Now I'm stuck. What is it now? It is six o'clock. We have come to collect the bottles that you promised us, oh, your grandness. I watch her feet walking across the carpet. They look like ordinary feet. Come in. Come in. Do not stand there dithering in the corridor. I don't have all night. Oh, thank you, your grandness. Thank this you. This is my only chance. I jump out from behind the bedpost and run like lightning towards the open door. I jump over several pairs of shoes on the way, and in three seconds I am out in the corridor, still clutching the precious bottle to my chest. No one saw me. I scamper up to the fifth floor and the door of my own bedroom. Using the bottom of the little bottle, I tap on the door. Grandmama, it's me. Let me in. I've done it. I've got it, Grandmama. Look, here it is. I've got a whole bottle of it. My darling boy, I thought I'd never see you again. I'm so happy you got away. Grandmother picks me up and puts me on the table. How did you get out of the room? I shot out as the witches were coming in. It was a close call. I wouldn't want to do it again. I saw her, you know. I heard you talking to each other. She is absolutely foul. Did you see a mask? Oh, it's amazing. Even though I knew it was a mask, I simply couldn't tell. It looks just like a real face. A kindly face, and yet she's a murderer. The most evil woman in the entire world. She must be stopped. What time are the witches due in the dining room for supper? Eight o'clock. Oh... Uh, we've got less than two hours to plan our next move. Where's Bruno? 
Over here. Oh, dear me. What's happened to you? What do you mean? You've got really fat. Have you been in that fruit bowl the entire time? How much have you eaten? I'm half a for my fourth banana. I think you've had quite enough. You're only a mouse. It's time we return this little fellow to the bosom of his family. Don't you agree, Bruno? Let's hope that this is what I want. I'd rather be them than you. Yeah, of course you would. Now, do you know where your parents might be at the moment? They were sitting in the lounge not long ago. I saw them as we dashed through on our way up here. Right. Let's go and see if they are still there. How will you hide us? Well, here. Climb into my handbag. Keep quiet. And stay out of sight. Come on, Bruno. All that, all that. Her handbag is a large, bulky, black leather affair with a tortoiseshell clasp. Well, well, if you, if you must, peep out now and again, but don't show any more than your nose. I shall leave the clasp undone. May I take the rest of that banana? Oh, very well. Anything to keep you quiet. Now let's go. <laughs> Not Come on, over there, in the armchair. Bruno's father is reading the paper. His mother is knitting. Oh yes, I see them. Excuse me, are you Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins? Yes, I'm Mr. Jenkins. What can I do for you, madam? I'm afraid I have some rather alarming news for you. It's about your son Bruno. Bruno. What about him? What's the little blighter been up to now? Raiding the kitchen, I suppose. Uh, it's a bit worse than that. Worse? Uh, do you think we might go somewhere more private so I can tell you about it? Private? Why do we have to be private? This is not an easy thing for me to explain. I'd much rather we all went up to your room and sat down before I tell you any more. I don't want to go up to my room. No, we're quite comfortable here. Thank you very much. Friendly, state your business and leave us alone. We really can't talk in here. There are too many people. This is a rather personal and delicate matter. I'll talk or I dashed won't want to, madam. Now come on, out with it. There's no need for rudeness. If Bruno's broken a window or smashed your spectacles, and I'll pay for the damage. I'm not budging from this seat. People are staring. I don't care. I've got a lot to finish. Where is Bruno, anyway? Tell him to come here and see me. He's here already. He's in my handbag. What the heck do you mean he's in your handbag? Are you trying to be funny? But there's nothing funny about this. Your son has suffered a rather unfortunate mishap. He's always suffering mishaps. He suffers from overeating and then he suffers from wind. You should hear him after supper. Sounds like a brass band. Oh, a good dose of casserole soon puts him right. I do think it might be better if we went somewhere private before you meet him in his present state. The woman's mad. Tell her to go away, dear. The plain fact is, your son Bruno has been drastically altered. Altered? What the devil do you mean, altered? Go away, you silly old woman. I am trying to tell you as gently as I can that Bruno really is here in my handbag. My own grandson actually saw them doing it to him. Saw who doing what to him, for heaven's oh, sake? Saw the witches turn him into a mouse. Call the manager, dear. Have this mad woman thrown out of the hotel. Right then. I will show you. Bruno! Where are you? I'm eating. She lifts Bruno out of the bag and dumps him on the small table between Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins. Ah! 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 Oh, oh, it's a mouse! Take it away! I, I can't stand the This mix. is Bruno! You nasty, cheeky old woman! Oh, no, don't, you don't flap your newspaper you. at him! You knock him off the table! Get out of here and take that filthy mouse with you! Oh, come along, Bruno! Pick into the handbag! Oh, Well, I did my best. You couldn't have done more, Grandma. Why on earth didn't you speak up and tell your father who you were, Bruno? I said my mouth full. You never stop eating. I'm hungry. What a very disagreeable little boy you are. Not boy, mouse. Quite right, my darling, but we don't have time to worry about that at the moment. We have plans to make. 
In about half an hour, the witches will be going down to the dining room for supper. Yes. And every one of them has to be given a dose of Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker. Yes. How on earth are we going to do that? I think you're forgetting that a mouse can go places where a human being can't. That is quite right. But even a mouse can't go creeping around on the tabletop, carrying a bottle and sprinkling potion all over a witch's roast beef without being spotted. I wasn't going to do it in the dining room. Then where? In the kitchen, while the food is being prepared. My darling child, I do believe that turning you into a mouse has doubled your brain power. A little mouse can run round in a kitchen among the pots and pans, and if he's careful, no one will ever see him. Brilliant! By golly, I think we've got it. The only thing is, how will I know which food is theirs? Well, you certainly don't want to put it in the wrong saucepan. I would turn all the other guests into mice by mistake, and you as well, Grandmama. You're just going to have to creep into the kitchen, find a good hiding place, then wait and listen. What for? For a clue from the cooks. When there is a big party to cater for, they usually prepare the food separately. Right. That's what I'll have to do.、Mm. It's going to be very dangerous. I know. Nobody welcomes a mouse in the kitchen. If they see you, they'll squash you to death. I won't let them see me. Well, don't forget you'll be carrying the bottle. You won't be nearly so quick and nippy. I can run quite fast with the bottle in my arms. What about unscrewing the top? Where is it? Let me try. If I put all my strength into it. <laughs> Mm. Oh, I can do it. Well done. You really are a very clever mouse. Are we all set then? Here's the plan. At half past seven, I shall go down to the dining room for supper with you in my handbag. Yes. I shall release you under the table together with the precious bottle, and from then on, you'll be on your own. I understand. You'll have to get from the dining room to the door that leads into the kitchen. There will be waiters going in and out all the time. I'll just have to choose the right moment and nip in behind one of them. For heaven's sake, make sure you don't get trodden on. I'll try not to. But whatever happens, don't let them catch you. Don't go on about it. You're making me nervous. You are a brave little fellow. I do love you. What shall we do with Bruno? I'm coming with you. I'm not missing my supper. You can come along if you stay in my bag and keep absolutely quiet. Will you pass through the dining room from the table? Yes, if you promise to behave yourself. Deal. My darling, would you like something to eat? I'm too excited. I've got a big job ahead of me. You'll never do a bigger one. The time has come. The great moment has arrived. Are you ready, my child? Yes, Grandmama. We must go now. Hang on, can I just raise my banana? No. She scoops Bruno up and puts him in her handbag. I shall leave the clasp undone. I clutch the little bottle to my chest as she lifts me up and kisses me on the nose. Good luck, my darling. And by the way, you do realise you have got a tail, don't you? A tail? A long curly tail. Oh yeah, I have, haven't I? I lift my tail up and swish it from side to side. I can curl it and twist it and shake it. Cool. I mention it only because it might come in useful when you're climbing around in the kitchen. In what way? You can hook it onto things and you can swing from it and lower yourself to the ground from high places. I wish I'd known this before. I could have practiced using it. Too late for that now. She places me in her handbag with Bruno, picks up her walking stick. And we make our way to the lift. Listen, I won't be able to talk to you much when we're in the dining room. If I do, people will think I'm dotty and talking to myself. Okay, Grandma. When we get to the dining room. I peep out of the handbag. I see two long tables. No one is sitting down at them yet. Each one has a notice on. Reserved 
for members of the RSPCC. My grandmother sits at her small table in the corner. She unfolds a napkin and spreads it over the handbag in her lap, then reaches under it and gently lifts me out. Are you holding the bottle? Yes. I'm ready, Grandmama. Good evening, then. Oh, good evening. Would you like to see the menu? Thank you. Where is the little gentleman tonight? Uh, he's not feeling very well. He's staying in his room. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's very kind. Our specials tonight are pea green soup to start with, and for the main course there is a choice of either grilled filet of sole or roast lamb. Pea soup and lamb for me, please, but, but don't hurry. I'm in no rush tonight. In fact, why don't you bring me a glass of dry sherry first? Of course, madam. I'll be back with it shortly. How's your chance? My grandmother pretends she has dropped something, and as she bends down, she slides me out from under her napkin onto the floor. Go, darling. Go. I'm on my own now. I clutch the little bottle tightly. The kitchen door is on the other side of the dining room. Wish me luck. I run. No one sees me. I'm just about to cross the main entrance into the dining room when... The witch is coming for dinner. I wait till they are all past me. Then I make a dash for the kitchen door. A waiter opens it to go in, and I nip in behind him. Four soups and two lambs and two fish for tip 28. Four soups, two lambs, two fish. I hide behind a dustbin and listen. Everyone is rushing about. It's busy. Three apple pies and two ice creams for number 17. Not far above my head is a handle sticking out from the top of the dustbin. We should be able to reach that. Holding onto the bottle, I leap, turn a somersault in mid-air and catch hold of the handle with the end of my tail. This is great! I swing to and fro, upside down. This is how a trapeze artist in a circus must feel. The old bag on table 13 says the meat's too tough. She wants another portion. The cook takes her plate, scrapes off the meat and slaps another bit on instead. Come on, guys. Give her some gravy. Carries the plate round to everyone in the kitchen. Enjoy your meal, madam, you whinging out cow. Every one of the cooks spits on the food. It's horrible. All done. Tell her we hope she chokes on it. Hey, <laughs> Will. Oh, 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 by the way, everyone in the big RSPCC party wants the soup. What did he say? I creep closer to hear what's going on. Put a soup for the big party in the large silver soup terrain. The cook places a huge silver basin onto the wooden side bench. That's where the soup is going. So that's where the stuff in my little bottle is going as well. Up near the ceiling is a long shelf full of saucepans. I have to get up there. Then I'll be directly above the soup basin. But how to get across the kitchen? Then a great idea comes to me. I'm going to swing like a trapeze artist. I jump and hook my tail round the handle of the dustbin and start swinging backwards and forwards, higher and higher. Got to go at just the right moment. One last big swing and let go with my tail. I fly across the kitchen and land on the middle shelf. It's marvellous being a mouse. From there, I somehow managed to climb up a water pipe to the top shelf. Now, I just need to get above the basin. That's about right. Here we go. I carefully unscrew the top of the bottle and tip it all in. That's it. I've done it. The next moment, the cook comes along with a gigantic saucepan of steaming green soup. He pours it into the basin on top of the magic potion. Soap for the big party, all ready to go out? Yep, I've got it. Going out now. The waiter picks up the silver basin and carries it away. The witches are going to get the mouse maker. I make my way back along the shelf. I begin using my tail more and more. I swing from the handle of one saucepan to the handle of another. Ready, steady, whee! Uh, now we'll just jump across there. Whee! Uh, 
It's great being a mouse. I'm having so much fun, I forget something important. I should be keeping out of sight. I can do somersaults and backflips and... A mouse! Look at that, dirty little mouse! Uh-oh. Oh. Kill it! That's a big knife. Come here, there. Oh. Oh. I'm falling. Catch it quick. Oh. 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 My tail, oh. where's my tail? Kill it before it gets away. Cut it off. Step on it. Got to run. I twist and turn and dodge and swerve across the kitchen floor. And then... Hide. I run up the inside of the cook's trouser leg and cling to his sock. Hey, he's got up my trousers! Slugged him to death! I'm going to get smashed if I don't move. And the only way is up. Oh, he's running up my leg! Got to get out of here! Oh, he's in my knickers! Oh, oh, help! He's running round in my flaming knickers! Get it out! Somebody help me get it out! Take off your trousers! This is not a good place to be! Get them off! Little swine! Drop your pants and we'll soon catch him! The moment wasn't here! I find the top of the other trouser leg. I go down it like waist lightning. I'm on the floor. Before anyone sees me, I dive into a sack of potatoes and hide, trying to get my breath. You've taken your trousers off. He's not in there. Well, he was. There's no mouse in your trousers. Look. I swear he was in there. There's only a mouse anyway. What a lot of fuss about nothing. Have you ever had a mouse in your trousers? No, but then I don't usually work in the kitchen wearing only my pants. I have to get back to Grandma. Yeah, get on with it. Two B specials at table six. A waitress comes in through the kitchen doors, and I make a run for it. I get through them just in time. That was close. I hide by the skirting board, my tail throbbing. I curl it round and take a look. It's bleeding. A good two inches have been chopped off the end. I hold it up as best I can and scurry back to my grandmother's table. I shimmy up one of her legs and land in her lap. Grandma, I'm back. I did it. I put it all in. Well done, my darling. Well done, you. The witches are at this moment eating their soup. Oh, my dear child, you've got blood on you. What happened? One of the cooks cut off my tail with a carving knife. Oh, does it hurt? Just a bit. Let me look at it, you poor little thing. She fishes a lace-edged handkerchief out of her bag and ties it around the end of my tail. Uh, That should stem the bleeding. Thank you, Grandmama. You poured the whole bottle into the witch's soup? Every drop. This should be quite spectacular. Can you lift me up so I can watch? I'll pop you in my handbag and you can peep out when you want to. Bruno is in there as well, but take no notice of him. I gave him a roll to eat and that's keeping him busy. In you go. Hello, Bruno. Mm, This roll's okay. It would be nice with butter on. I peer over the top of the handbag. Can you see them clearly enough? Yes. They finish their soup. The waiter is taking the bowls away. Even the Grand Eye Witch. Even her. Such a small creature. Hard to believe she could kill you. She could kill any one of us with her white hot sparks. Get inside. The waiter's coming. Your roast lamb, madam. And which vegetables would you like? Peas? Carrots? Carrots, please. But no potatoes. There. Enjoy your food, madam. Thank you very much. It's all right. He's gone. You can poke your head out again. No one's noticed me, have they? I don't think so. My problem is I've got to talk to you without moving my lips. You're doing it beautifully. I've counted the witches. There aren't nearly as many as you thought. Were you just guessing when you said 200? It seemed like 200. I was wrong, too. I thought there were a lot more witches than this in England. How many are there? Eighty-four. There were eighty-five, but one of them got fried. Ah, Mr. Jenkins. How nice to see you again. Where is that grandson of yours? Excuse me? My guess is that he and my son Bruno are up to no good. Why do you think that? 
Bruno hasn't turned up for his supper, and it takes a lot to make that boy miss his food. I must admit he does have a very healthy appetite. Are you in on this as well? What on earth do you mean? I don't know who the devil you are, and I don't much care. But you played a nasty trick on me and my wife this afternoon. You put a dirty little mouse on our table. That makes me think all three of you are up to something. I see. So if you know where Bruno is hiding, kindly tell me at once. That mouse I tried to give you was your own son. I was trying to restore him to the bosom of his family. What the blazes do you mean, madam? My son is not a mouse. This is going to get nasty. I can well understand your anger, Mr. Jenkins. Any other English father would be just as cross as you are. But over in Norway, where I come from, we are quite used to these sorts of happenings. You must be mad, woman. Where is Bruno? If you don't tell me, I shall call the police. Bruno is a mouse. Bruno is most certainly not a mouse. Oh yes, I am. <gasps> Hello, Bruno. Have you finished eating? For now. Hello, Dad. Bruno. <laughs> don't worry. It's not as bad as all that. Just as long as the cat doesn't get me. Is it possible? No more school. No more homework. I shall live in the kitchen cupboard and feast on raisins and honey. Bruno, how, how did this happen? Witches, the witches did it. He can't be a mouse. He is, Mr. Jenkins. Be nice to him. Mrs. Jenkins will go crazy. She can't stand the things. We should just have to get used to him. I hope you don't keep a cat in the house. We do. We do. Topsy is my wife's favourite creature. Then you just have to get rid of Topsy. Your son is more important than your cat. He certainly is. Would you like to know who did this to him? Yes. That woman over there, the small woman in the black dress at the head of the long table. She's RSPCC. She's the chairwoman. No, she is not. She's the Grand High Witch of all the world. I'll have my lawyers onto her for this. I'll make her pay through the nose. I wouldn't do anything rash. She has magic powers. She might decide to turn you into something even worse than a mouse. A cockroach, perhaps. I'd like to see her try. And with that, he marches over to where the Grand High Witch is sitting. Look here, I watch him. I By now, hat. everyone in the dining room has stopped eating and is watching him too. What's going on? Grandma, the Grand High Witch. Something's happening to her. She started jumping up in the air. She's on the tabletop, waving her arms. What is it? Keep quiet and listen. They're all at it. It's like spikes are being stuck in their bottoms. They can't keep still. They're jumping all over the tables. Look. They've frozen. <laughs> They're shrinking, Grandmama. They're shrinking just like I did. They're growing fur on their faces. It's the mouse maker. It's working. Grandmother lifts me and Bruno up so we don't miss all the fun. In a few seconds, all the witches have completely disappeared. Look at the tops of the tables. They're swarming with mice. Our work is done, Bruno. It's time to restore you to the famous bosom of your family. The Jenkins are easy to find. Mrs. Jenkins is shouting louder than anyone else. Grandmother hands Bruno over to Mr. Jenkins. Here's your little boy. He needs to go on a diet. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Outside, it is a lovely, warm evening, and I can hear the waves breaking on the beach just across the road from the hotel. Dorman, is there a taxi? Certainly, madam. Taxi? Taxi? Are we going home, Grandmama? Yes, back 
to Norway. Hooray! I thought you'd like that. But what about our luggage? Who cares about luggage? Yes! Before long, we're in Norway again, in my grandmother's fine old house. It is lovely. We soon settle in, and I spend the evenings sitting on her lap by the fire like old times. We keep entirely to ourselves, and we're very happy in each other's company. Can I ask you something, Grandma? Of course. As the flames flicker in the grate, I look up at her wrinkled face. How long does a mouse live? Ah, uh, I've been waiting for you to ask me that. Go on, then. Tell me. I'm afraid a mouse doesn't live for very long. How long? Well, an ordinary mouse only lives for about three years. But you are not an ordinary mouse. You are a mouse person, and that is a very different matter. How long does a mouse person live? Almost certainly three times as long. About nine years. That's the best news I've ever had. Why do you say that? Because I would never want to live longer than you. I couldn't stand being looked after by anyone else. How old are you, Grandmama? I'm 86. Will you live another eight or nine years? I might, with a bit of luck. Then we can both die together. That would be perfect. Shall I tell you something about yourself that is very interesting? Yes, please. The heart of a mouse, that means your heart, beats at a rate of 500 times a minute. That's nearly nine beats every second. That's incredible. It's a sort of miracle. Your heart is going so fast, it's impossible to hear the separate beats. All one hears is a soft humming sound. Have you ever heard my heart humming, Grandmama? Often. When you are lying close to me on the pillow at night. For supper that evening, my grandmother eats an omelette and a slice of bread and I have a piece of brown Norwegian goat's milk cheese. Grandmama, now that we have done away with the Grand High Witch, will all the witches in the world disappear? I'm afraid not. When a queen bee dies, there is always another queen in the hive ready to take her place. It's the same with witches. In the great headquarters where the Grand High Witch lives, another Grand High Witch will have taken over. That means everything we did was for nothing. We saved the children of England. But that's not nearly good enough. What about the rest of the world? Oh. Actually, I have some rather interesting news for you. Tell me. After we got back, I called the chief of police in Bournemouth. I told him I was the chief of police for the whole of Norway. And he believed you? Of course he believed me. He was very honoured to receive my call. <laughs> what did you ask him? I asked him for the address of the lady who had stayed in room 454 in the Hotel Magnificent. The lady that disappeared. The Grand Eye Witch? But they'd found her passport in her room and her address was in it. And guess what country she was from. Norway! Right first time. It's a castle high up in the mountains. My grandmother gets up from the table and starts to pace excitedly, waving her stick about. She knocks over a tall and very beautiful vase. <coughs> it smashes into a million pieces. Oh, don't worry about it. It's only Ming. We have work to do, you and I. Thank heavens you are a mouse. A mouse can go anywhere. All I need to do is put you down somewhere near the Grand High Witch's Castle and you will easily be able to get inside and creep about looking and listening to your heart's content. No one will ever see me. I could spend days in there. Mm. I myself will get a room in the village and you can sneak out of the castle every night and have supper with me and tell me what is going on. But that won't be your main job. What will my main job be? To destroy every witch in the castle. Every last one of them. That will be the end of the whole organisation. Me? Destroy them? Oh, yes. How will I do that? Can't you think? Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker. Ah, you remember the recipe, don't you? Yes. Then that's how we'll do it. But how can we make it? If they can make it, then so can we. It's just a question of knowing what goes in. But where will we find a Gruntle's egg or a Blabbersnitch? I've never even heard of these things. Leave all that to me. 
I'll find the ingredients. Then we'll make the potion together. But how, Grandmama? Never you mind about that. My grandmother grows very quiet, lost deep in thought. The hand with the missing thumb quivers slightly. Why do you hate the witches so much? She strokes the scar which covers the place where the thumb should be. I have my reasons. She reaches across and touches what is left of my tail. And so do you. Mouse maker is too good for them. The mouse traps we set for them will soon sort them out. Mouse traps will be no good. Why not? When I became a mouse, I didn't just become an ordinary mouse. I became a talking, intelligent mouse person who wouldn't go near a mouse trap. Which means if we turn the witches into talking, thinking, and very, very nasty mouse witches, they'll be too cunning for a mouse trap. You're right. They're dangerous enough when they're disguised as ladies. Imagine the damage a grand high witch could do disguised as a mouse. She could go anywhere. Hmm. I've got it. Tell me. Cats. Brilliant. Bring on the cats. Half a dozen cats will kill them all in five minutes flat. I'll just have to make sure I'm well out of the way. Absolutely. And when the job's done, you can take all the cats away. And we'll have the castle completely to ourselves. Then we can go through the records and get the names and addresses of all the witches in the entire world. And after that, my darling, the greatest task of all will begin. We shall pack our bags and go travelling all over the world. And in every country we visit, we will search out the witches and leave deadly drops of Formula Eighty Six delayed action mouse maker in their food. It will be a triumph, a colossal, unbeatable triumph. We shall do it entirely by ourselves, just you and me. That will be our work for the rest of our lives. My grandmother picks me up from the table and kisses me on the nose. Oh my goodness. We are going to be busy these next few weeks and months and years. I think we are, but what fun and excitement it's going to be! You can say that again. I can't wait to get started. Are you being really truthful? It's the gospel truth, Grandmama. Are you sure you don't mind being a mouse for the rest of your life? I don't mind at all. In fact, I'm happy being a mouse. And why is that? Because I've got you, Grandmama. It doesn't matter who you are or what you look like. So long as somebody loves you. Now, shall we write down that recipe? In part two of *The Witches* by Roald Dahl, dramatised by Lucy Catherine, Boy was played by Ryan Watson, Grandmother by Margaret Tyzak. The Grand High Witch by Amanda Lawrence, and the narrator was Toby Jones. Bruno Jenkins was played by Jordan Clark, Mr. Jenkins by Ben Crow, Mrs. Jenkins by Rachel Atkins, and the waiter was Ben Unwokwe. The director was Claire Grove. <laughs>